Our tagline is that we believe that a high quality rental property is the absolute best investment a person can make. So that begs the question, what is it that makes a rental property high quality? You're about to find out. Please excuse the stain on my shirt. My newborn just decided to puke on me right before this recording. I'm Kirby Atwell and this is Living Off Rentals where we believe, as I just mentioned, that a high quality rental property is the absolute best investment a person can make. So I started investing in real estate in 2006. That was when I did my first rental property. And since then I've done several great deals. I've done some that you know, were average and I've done a few I wish I could forget about completely. Uh, but there's been certain themes that have emerged, certain factors that attribute to a high quality rental property. And so I've distilled those down into four main categories and I'm gonna go over those with you right now. And so hopefully once this video is over, you'll be able to identify much easier what constitutes a high quality rental property. But first I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, I'm told by the YouTuber, YouTuberists, the, the people who do this YouTube stuff for a living, that subscribers are pretty important to your channel. So I'd be forever grateful if you found value in this, if you would subscribe, because right now as of recording this, it's a brand new channel, and I've got, check my analytics here, I've got exactly zero subscribers. So I'd love to take this maiden voyage with you if you'd like to come along and subscribe, you'll get updates when new videos are released. The first factor that contributes to a high quality rental property is something that I'm sure you've probably heard about if you've been around rental property investing for any amount of time. It's what most investors, myself included, consider to be the most important aspect of rental property investing, and that is the cash flow. So what is cash flow? Cash flow is whatever's left over at the end of the month. So you take all your gross income. If it's a single family home, most likely that's just the rent. But if it's an apartment complex, it might be some parking income or some laundry income or pet fees. And then you subtract out your expenses. And a lot of times the biggest expense is gonna be the cost of financing, but there's other expenses. And then I like to add in some set-asides as well that I subtract from the gross income because I like to set aside some money in an account for a rainy day because I know if you're if you're doing rental property investing there's going to be a rainy day there's going to be a time when you need those funds so what is considered good cash flow on a single family rental property I like to have at least three hundred five hundred dollars at the end of the month left over on a single family property now if you're investing in apartment buildings it's tougher to say a general rule of thumb because there's different levels of apartment buildings they call them classes but so different classes are going to yield different cash flow per per door so hundred dollars might be adequate for an apartment building or two hundred dollars per door you know or less it, it just depends on the class level now some people invest in properties where the expenses actually exceed the income and they invest purely based on the thought that that property is going to appreciate over time and so that's called negative cash flow sometimes that can work out for you if the property really appreciates but in a down cycle it can be extremely dangerous because you can very quickly get upside down where you owe more than the property's worth so you've got a property you can't sell and then also you're supporting the property by paying extra on it each month as opposed to it paying you which is the whole purpose of rental property investing so i highly recommend investing for positive cash flow, 300 to $500 a month as a general rule of thumb. Factor number two that attributes to a high quality rental property, and that is equity. So what is equity? Equity is the difference between what you owe on a property and what it's actually worth. So that spread is what your equity is. So it's possible for you to make more by signing your name at the closing table in five seconds than some people make in an entire year of working a nine to five job. So let's talk through an example. You find a property that maybe you can buy for $60,000. Now it might be listed for 70, but it's an ugly property and so you can get it for 60. And that's really what you're targeting is you're targeting these properties. They call them value add, which is a nice way of saying it's a really crappy property. 
needs a lot of work, right? So because it's ugly, you can, you can negotiate from 70 down to 60. You buy it for 60, but once it's all fixed up, it's worth $120,000 because that's what the, the comparable sold comps are selling for. So then you calculate how much you need to rehab it, and because of your relationships with contractors and your wholesale pricing on materials and maybe some sweat equity that you're gonna put into it, all it's gonna cost you is $20,000 to rehab it to make it worth 120. So do the math, you got 60,000 in the purchase, you got $20,000 in the rehab, and now it's worth 120. So for every dollar you put into that property in rehab, you got $3 back from it. That's a pretty good investment. So I know what you're saying, you didn't make $40,000 when you signed your name, there's other stuff, you gotta rehab the property, there's other steps you have to take, but I get it, right? But essentially, all those things are things that you can follow a step-by-step -step system. There's 100 people out there that could help you rehab that property that are looking for, for work that you can hire. The hard thing is finding a great deal that you can buy for 60 that's gonna be worth 120 fixed up, and then you've gotta be really smart about the rehab that you do and, and keep your costs low so that you've got that $40,000 spread in it. But think about the power of that. You can replicate that time after time. That's, that's what I've done with my rental properties. And every time you sign on the dotted line and you close on a property, you're making $40,000 in net worth. So your balance sheet is increasing $40,000. So let's say you do that six times in a year, that's $240,000. You can do six of these properties part time. That's a significant amount of money. So let's compare equity and cash flow now. So many people will overlook this second step. They'll just be focused on the cash flow and discount the power of the equity. They'll buy a turnkey property at market price and they don't build in any of that equity from the start. But if you think about it, if you're making $400 a month in cash flow on a property, it's going to take you 100 months to accumulate the $40,000 that you could have made by signing, by signing on the dotted line, by buying the right property that you can rehab and build in $40,000 of equity. And that's what I've done over and over again. And so you got the cash flow first. So you've got the 300, 400, 500 a month coming in. Now you've just created $40,000 of equity, but we still got two more steps. Factor number three that attributes to a high quality rental property is the factor that actually is overlooked the most by new investors because it's something that doesn't stand out as adding extra value, but it's essential to keeping number, factor number one and factor number two, the cash flow and equity, really strong, and that is management. You've got to have a really, really strong management team because your cash flow is going to diminish if you don't have a strong manager. You're going to start to have vacancies, you're going to start to have problems with tenants, and then the quality of the property, all the work that you put in to accumulate this equity, all that equity is gonna disappear because the quality is gonna diminish really quickly if somebody's not managing the property right, making sure that the maintenance is staying on track, making sure that the tenants aren't destroying the property. So management is extremely important. A lot of new investors in the beginning, they wanna manage the property themselves. I think that's excellent in the beginning. You learn some lessons, you learn what to watch for, what to ask about. But I also think there's people who can do this a lot better than we can as investors, people who specialize. I don't think you'd probably dabble with your own dental work on the weekends. You'd probably go out and find a dentist. And property managers are the exact same thing. You wanna identify a really strong property manager before you start buying so that you can kind of base your buying criteria off of it. Where am I gonna buy? What types of properties can this man person manage for me and do a really good job at what types of properties do they specialize in how much do they charge so you identify all that in advance and it's going to keep factor number one and factor number two really really solid the fourth factor that attributes to a high quality rental property is only investing in properties that attributes to the outcomes that you've pre-identified so what does that mean people ask me all the time what should i be investing in you know, what, what types of properties. There's all these different strategies. If you go to any of the weekend seminars, you're gonna come across gurus that will tell you, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing that. But what I always recommend upfront is identifying why are you doing this in the first place? I know a lot of people 
really love real estate investing and that's awesome but you're probably not doing this as a hobby because you have a whole bunch of extra time on your hands you probably want to make money and you probably have some specific reason some outcome that you're doing this for maybe you want to save for your kids college that's 10 years in the distance or maybe you want to save for retirement or maybe you want it to pay you indefinitely starting in 10 years. You tend to make a little bit of progress in a lot of different directions as opposed to getting any real traction. So what I always recommend is make sure you establish the clear outcomes, write them down in advance before you start this and then backwards plan from there. So in 10 years, if you wanna have a certain amount of money or a certain amount of income from these properties, what are the types of properties? How many properties? What types of cash flow do those need to kick off? And you start to backwards plan to know today I should be buying this specific type of property, not just any good deal, quote unquote, that's out there. And that will help you decide if this is a high quality rental property for you because it's different for each investor. So there you have it, the four factors that contribute to a high quality rental property. As I said in the beginning, if you enjoyed this, if you could do me a solid and like it, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you liked about it. In one of my upcoming videos, I'm gonna be talking about the exact steps that I recommend taking if you wanna get started in rental property investing. So be on the lookout for that. You can also check out clips from some of the interviews that I've done with some really sharp individuals who are living the living off rentals lifestyle. You can also come over to Facebook and join the Facebook group and ask any questions that you might have. See you right back here for the next video.